What's up guys, welcome back to another video and uh, in today's video, let's continue from where we left off in our previous video. In our previous video, we saw how to authenticate users in your uh, Flutter applications with the help of an email and a password, right? We also saw how to add new users to your application. Uh, in this video, let's talk about social authentication. Social authentication is an excellent way to enable or rather to help the user to log in across different web applications or web platforms using the same uh, account that he created in a particular uh, application. So uh, the commonly used ones are Google, Facebook and Twitter, right? Uh, whenever you visit a web application, uh, web application is in whenever you visit a site and it asks you to uh, sign in, uh, you usually you can either create an account or sign in and use it to sign in or uh, you could simply use your Facebook account to sign in or you could simply use your Twitter account to sign in, right? So uh, all these different uh, social authentication providers, they mostly use the OAuth 2.0 uh, flow for signing in, guys. Now, Firebase out of the box, it provides these providers uh, ready-made to us. We just need to enable these and then do some basic configuration in your application to enable a user to sign in inside your application using any of these providers. It, it's a really simple process, uh, but you need to know how to do it. So in this video, let's talk about Google. Okay. And in our subsequent videos, we'll talk about Facebook and Twitter. But in this video, let's focus on Google. The first thing you need to do while uh, using this particular authentication provider is uh, you need to click on this and click on enable. Okay, now uh, for Google sign-in, we need to add a SHA key. Okay, uh, to do that, what you need to do is just uh, click on save here and then get back to project overview. I have added seven apps here, right? Only three will be visible at a time. Anyway, uh, which is the app that we are working in? Flutter auth is the app that we were working. Just click on settings. You can add multiple applications to the same uh, Firebase project as many people I see creating a new project for every application but um, just for a testing or uh, debugging you can simply use the same project and then add multiple applications to it and start testing. Anyway that's not the focus here. Uh, simply click on, wait before adding a fingerprint simply click on this and then, uh, I mean mouse over on this and then click on see this page. They will provide you with a command line key. Okay, for Mac and Linux, this is the key, right? Just copy this, open a terminal, and then paste it there. It lasts for a password, you need not even enter it. But you should enter it if you are signing using this key for signing your application. I will talk about that later in a, another video. Now, simply take this SHA1 fingerprint, copy this, and then go ahead and add it here add fingerprint add it here it will it will show sha1 just click on save once you do this download this new version of google services.json okay download this okay i have pasted my uh, google services.json here let's move on uh, get back into your application this is your application right why is this a large workspace just the size is large Anyway, uh, get into pubspec.yaml and then uh, here add one more dependency for uh, Google sign in. Okay, save this, sorry, save this. It will automatically get the package for you, no issues there. Uh, get back to login page dot dot. Import that package here. Cool. Now, uh, the next thing you need to do is simply navigate here. Uh, and then create an object for that. Google uh, sign in and uh, uh, Google auth equals new Google sign in sign in okay uh, once this is done you just need to go here and then create another button so rather than creating another button I will simply 
copy this copy this paste it here and then inside this you need to first we will say login with google okay and then we will simply remove everything uh, on press this is where you need to uh, write code for make use of that plugin and uh, try to log in using google this is actually really simple guys mostly uh, i mean there are two ways of doing this one is to follow the lit, uh, simple uh, the simple way that will ch that i'll show you now the other way is to use a async await uh, function now i'll show you the simple one okay simple way google auth uh, this is the thing that we created there right the object that we created uh, now google auth dot uh, sign in simply sign in dot uh, then okay now we will have a uh, result for this right okay we handle the error as well now we will have the result here result what we need to do is once again result dot sorry 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 result result dot authentication dot uh, then here is where we will have a key uh, we will simply say google key okay handle error here as well fine now what should we do with this particular key uh, fire store fire sorry firebase auth dot instance instance dot uh, sign in sign in with google right and uh, here you simply make use of that uh, a particular uh, key uh, id token uh, google key dot uh, id token similarly uh, access token google key dot access token fine now simply do a then sorry then now we will know whether the user is successfully signed in or not right so signed signed in user fine once again error handling printing out the error in the console is not proper error handling guys you need to analyze what the error is and actually throw out the error in an alert or something so that the user gets to know what's the error I am just simply printing it out. So uh, since this is just a basic demonstration of how to do it. Okay, don't do this in your production level applications. So the user is signed in, simply print uh, signed, sorry, signed in as dollar braces signed in user dot display name and uh, we also need to navigator dot off context uh, dot uh, push replacement named uh, home page home page right what was the yeah, home page so once the user signs in we are taking him to the dashboard page as well as printing uh, his display name here as well i mean once the user signs in using google we are first signing in using google getting the tokens id token and the access token and then making use of these two to sign in uh, into our application which is which uh, employs the firebase authentication system right you get what's happening here right and uh, once the user is signed in we are simply taking him to the home page the dashboard page as usual let's run this application and see what happens we'll try it out on our actual mobile device guys all right now we have our application, right? Let's just tap on login with Google and see what happens. Wow, it just signed in, right? So our authentication with Google works fine so far. Let's see whether we have been added to the users list. You can see that the provider Google and uh, I have been added recently, that is the date. Uh, so yeah guys our authentication system works fine now and uh, if we notice the uh, visual studio code as well 
I can't obviously open the code editor since the code editor and my screencasting tool will start fighting for my mobile device. Anyway, uh, yeah, our authentication system works fine, guys. As you can see, we have a Google authentication provider here. If I, I can simply uh, log out and uh, I'm returned back to my uh, login screen. I'll once again try logging in with Google. So yeah, guys, this is what I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, uh, now, the interesting thing is you might ask me why I haven't stored the user details in my database, right? Basically, for user management, what I said was yesterday, you remember what I said, whenever the user uh, create, I mean, signs up for our application, uh, the details, some details of the user would also be stored in this particular user's collection so that we can make use of these details uh, uh, temporarily to uh, throw his data across, say, for instance, the application is a social, social sharing application. You might need to show the details of one particular user to another user, right? in case they are conversing or something like that. So uh, this is the reason why I have a separate users collection and store some details, not the password or any other critical details, some details of the uh, user here in my, in my Firestore collection as well. So you might ask me why I didn't store this Google uh, uh, sign in, I mean the youth user who signed in with Google, his details also should get stored here, right? Why I didn't do that, you might ask me. Uh, whenever you are making use of one of the third party providers like Google, Facebook or Twitter and uh, uh, you are making, I mean, enabling login using one of those third party providers, it's always advised to ask the permission of the user before storing his or her data, right? Whenever you are using an application in production, kindly ask the permission of the user uh, before storing his or her data in the user's collection. That's the advised thing. Okay, that's the recommended thing, sorry. That's the recommended thing. So, uh, yeah, when you are using in production, kindly do that. Uh, yeah, guys, this is what I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, hit like if you like this video. Hit uh, subscribe and click on notifications to watch more cool stuff like this. And uh, my next video will be on Flutter authentication. I mean, Firebase authentication in your Flutter application, not Firebase, Facebook authentication in your Flutter application. So, stay tuned, guys. And I'll uh, talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.